Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today this is the next video of my series where I teach you guys React Jazz from the beginning and today I decided that since we've learned a lot so far, we've learned about props, we've learned about states, about the React life cycle, even about working with different components, I decided it was time to really work on the first project, which in my opinion is probably one of the best projects for you to begin working in, which is basically a, a very simple to-do list application and I'm going to be using different components to work with it and I'm going to try to demonstrate and replicate everything that we've learned so far so yeah so I have an empty application right here and uh, almost empty I'm just gonna erase this and instead of here I'm going to write um, I'm actually gonna write the h1 tag and call this to do list and I'm gonna give this two inputs so input type uh, text and I'm going to give this another input of type text as well. This one is going to be called time and I'm going to explain to you guys what all of this means. Basically in our to-do list application we're going to be able to create different tasks and add have a list with everything that we need to do in our in our life and each task will include the name of what we need to do and how much time we have to complete it. So the input that calls for task is basically going to receive the name of the task and the input for time is going to receive the name of the time. So let me create a label. This is going to be called task name and this is going to be time. So time and as you can see everything looks good, right? So we're also going to basically need a variable or a state that is going to hold whatever we write, we're currently writing on this inputs, right? So if I write my name here, we want a variable to constantly be changing and replacing its value to whatever we're writing in our input. And we do this by using states. I've already imported the use state hook over here. If you haven't, you need to do that. And I'm gonna create a state, right? So if you, if you don't know what a state is, I would recommend watching my video on states and you will understand it. So the variable, the first thing we need to keep in mind is the task name. So test name set task name and equals use state. And this is going to be a string. So we need to give it an empty string. And let me just copy this and let me paste it three times. This is going to be time. So set time it's also going to be a string and we also need a variable or a state that is going to represent the list of tasks we need we're currently adding to to our application right so it's going to start empty but as we add more tasks into our to-do list we need to keep that list and i'm going to call this task list and set task list and this is going to be a, an array so we set an empty array it looks fine so what we need to do now is use the same skills that we learned previously on how to change and set the states that represents the inputs. And uh, we're gonna change uh, whenever we're writing on our input, we want to set those states equal to the values that we're currently writing in our input. So how we do this is by writing the onChange property. And uh, over here, I give it an, an empty, like an array and with a parameter called E. And we use the same syntax that we learned previously. If you haven't seen this, I have another video on this. It's called like creating a login, something like that. But yeah, this is how you get the information you're currently writing on an input. You give it an on change event and you don't forget to call the, the parameter called E. So the argument called E, sorry. So instead of here, you can write the function. So since this represents the task, we can write set task name and give it the event dot uh, target dot value, right? Wait, value. And let's copy this. No, let's copy this and put it on the time thing and change this to set time. I just realized I wrote time wrong. Let me change this. Okay, set time. And on the on button, on the button, we need to give it an on click event and pass in a function. Let's pass in a function called add task. We haven't created this function yet, so this is probably what we're gonna do right now. So in this function, we literally just want to take the information that we're currently writing and add it to our list. So 
I'm going to use the ES6 function syntax. Basically, the difference is that if you want to write a function in normal JavaScript, you write function, the name of the function, parentheses, and an open and curly braces. And if you want to use the ES6 syntax, which is kind of like the, the, the common, uh, the most common pattern right now, you write const, the name of the function. So let's call it add task, an equal sign, a parentheses with all the arguments you want inside of it. In our case, there's none, an arrow and the curly braces, right? So inside of here, what we want to do is we, we want to set the task list equal, no, the task list equal to the, like we want to add to this list. We also can't forget to remove, no, not this. We, we can forget to set the, our inputs, our states for our inputs into an empty string, right? Because we want to clear the input every time we add. So set time, right? And I've made a video on array destructuring, so you guys should see it if you don't understand it. But basically when you have an array as a, as a state and you want to add another value to that array, basically what you do is you write an, an array that has the values from the previous, from the, 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 currently, the array currently has. So you write task list, which is the name of the array, and you add the new value right here. However, this is one of the important things of this project. This isn't going to be a, an array of string. This is actually going to be an array of objects. Why? Because we need to set for each task, we need to have the name and the time. So it's going to be an object with a property called task, and it's going to take the current uh, task name. And it's also going to have a property called time, which is going to take the current time. And if you don't know how to work with objects in React, I would recommend watching a video on it. It's really simple. And this is basically how you represent an object. You give it properties and uh, like a key, a key value pair, you know, the key is the task, the value is the task name. So this is how we add to our array. However, we have no way of representing this right now. I can simply write everything over here, but I want to I want to demonstrate how you use different components and props to make this more efficient. So I'm going to create a file called task, which is basically going to wait. I I wrote the name wrong, which is basically going to represent a div with the name and the of the task and the time. It's basically going to be that. And you guys are going to see why it's useful to use different components. So I'm going to write RFC and it's going to create the functional component in React for me. And inside of here, I'm actually going to give this a class name called task. And if I haven't mentioned this before, it is different in JSX, which is how you write HTML and JavaScript in React. Basically, you don't write class, you write class name, right? So it's basically the same thing. You just change the name and we'll have a div called task. Inside of here, let's have an H1 called uh, task name. And inside of here, let's give it the task. But now you're asking, what task? We have no variable called task in this component. That's right. But we're going to call it from the, the function right here. And for some reason, this is like not capitalized. I'm going to change this to, to, to become capitalized. If that happened with you guys, uh, you can change that. And inside of here, Instead of the curly braces, I'm going to give the props. We want to pass a task and a time. For each task, we want to pass actually a task name and a time, right? So task name. And uh, let's copy this and write time to complete and pass here the time. OK, what, how do we access, how do we give these variables, these properties? to our component is through our parent component. So basically we can come here and import this component, the task component by literally just writing task. And you can see that it will auto complete for you. But in order to pass variables to this component, we need to basically write here the prop, right? So task name equals to something and time equals to something, right? So if I, for example, made the task name equal to do homework and the time equals to 20 minutes, you can see that 
it would appear that we need to do a task called do homework in 20 minutes. However, I also want to add some styling. So I'm going to decrease the font size and also kind of like add a border to this. So I'm going to come to our component and I'm going to import the CSS file called app.css, right? So import, um, I'm going to navigate to where this app.css file is. And I'm going to come here and write task. Is that the name that we gave? Yeah, task. And let's change the font size. So um, font size, let's give it 10 pixels. Let's change the width to like 300 pixels, the height to like, I don't know, 100 pixels, the border to one pixel solid and black. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't look perfect, but that's okay. Let me also text align center to like center everything. But this is how it's gonna look probably, yeah. So every time we add something to the list, this is going to be created a new version of this with the new name and the new time to complete. I'm also going to add a margin top. So um, margin top of like, I don't know, 10 pixels, um, 10 pixels. Yeah, okay, now it looks kind of good. I'm going to navigate back to what we have here. And you see that whenever we call a component, another one appears in the screen. And I can do this a thousand times and I can call each one of them and a new task will appear. However, we don't wanna do this. We want to create a new one every time that we click the add button, right? So what we need to do is, since we're already adding stuff to our list, we can just come here and map through our list. So if I call task list dot map, this is a function that will loop through every element in the list and do something to it. So I'm going to call the task. So the element is going to be called task. And we're going to return for every task in the task list, we want to return a new component called task. And the properties we're going to give is basically task name. And the value is going to be task dot task name, right? Is that it, this is what we can basically name. Is it what we gave? No, we actually gave task. So let's call it task dot task. And let's give the time equal to task dot time. As you can see, the reason why we're, we're doing task dot time and task dot task is because for each element in the task list, there's an object and we call the object task on this function. And in order to access the task name as we defined over here, we need to call the name of the object task dot the property we want. So we want the task name or the task from our object and we want the time from, for, from our object. So I can literally just access it like this. So let me save this and see if it works. So I wanna do my homework and I need to do it in one hour. And I click add. You can see that now it added a task to our to-do list. I also want to, I actually have a, a math test today. So let me see, I get a hundred on exam. And it's in about four hours. And I click add. You can see that now our task has been added to our to-do list. And this is, proper, this is basically it. I know there are easier, easier ways of doing it and I really didn't want to do it on a very easy and simple way because I wanted to demonstrate how to work with components. You probably didn't need to create a separate component for the text, for the task and just copy and paste this because you didn't even need to have this component. However, I just think it is a good learning experience and I think this is probably one of the projects that will help you a lot in the beginning because it's going to reinforce the skills and everything you've learned so far in order for you to go above and beyond the next step, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned from it. If you guys are enjoying this series, please leave a comment down below telling me what I need to do, what you guys want to learn. If you have any doubts, please don't hesitate to comment down below. I'm going to run and try to answer you and help you with your questions. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I see you guys next time.